My name is Leah Vincent, and I'm a writer and community organizer. I grew up in what was called a yeshivish family. Some of the things that make this community really unusual are that they are is very strict gender roles. So girls and boys are kept separate, and girls are supposed to be obedient to the men in their lives and grow up to become mothers. When I think about the story of my life, I, I often wish I had a different story to tell. Like, I wish that my story was that I, you know, was this bold, um, gutsy girl who pushed back on the patriarchy, but that's really not what it was like at all. I adored my father, and I adored this God who had a suspicious likeness to my father and all the men that were telling me how to lead my life, like this very male God. When I was 16, I was in Israel um, for a year. I was doing kind of like a finishing school where I would learn more about the philosophy of our community and culture. It was discovered that I had spent the small allowance they sent me on a shirt that wasn't quite modest enough. And modesty was the most important thing for a girl. It was the way a girl was judged. Her whole worth was about how modest she was. And my father stopped speaking to me and my mother and I, our relationship just devolved into screaming matches and they stopped supporting me financially. And so when I was 17, I was here in New York City um, alone on my own, having zero preparation for the secular world. I had gone to Orthodox Jewish schools my whole life. I had never had a friend who wasn't an Orthodox Jew. I had been pushed out of my family and the only life I knew how to live, I suddenly wasn't allowed to live. The financial part wasn't nearly as hard as the emotional part. To you know, I grew up in such a close-knit family and community and culture, and suddenly I had nobody at all. Um, and so there was this park a couple blocks away from where I was living, where these guys, not Jewish guys, would go and play basketball, especially at night. And when I was coming home from work, I'd see them. And again, I was 17. I was a teenager, and I was still curious about what would it be like to talk to guys, and particularly not Jewish men. I had never talked to not Jews. And so I started hanging out at this park and trying to be friends with these guys who were playing there and trying to find a way to build a bridge out of this limbo that I found myself caught in. And um, I developed a relationship with one of the men. I think his primary occupation was selling weed. Um, but I didn't know about, I didn't care about any of of that, I didn't care really very much about his character. I cared that there was a human being on the planet who knew my name, who was happy to see me. For me, as our relationship progressed and we became sort of boyfriend and girlfriend, it was really important for me that there were limits to our relationship. I made this very clear to the guy, and despite saying this many times, one night we were hanging out, um, we were sitting around, we were making out, and instead of stopping when I told him to stop, as had happened before, he kept going, and he raped me. Um, and that was the end of the life I knew. You know, I was changed on every level because of that. You know, I had been taught that this would destroy me, and in some ways that was true, in some ways it did. Um, and of course, I didn't conceptualize it as rape. I knew I had told him to stop, and I knew I didn't want it, but I just thought it was my fault. That's what I had been taught. That's what I was told. A couple months later, I was rushed to the emergency room with really bad stomach pains that had been growing for weeks. And um, they didn't know what was wrong, so they rushed me into surgery, and they cut me open and found that all of my internal reproductive organs were coated in green slime. I had um, this man who had raped me had given me chlamydia, which had been left untreated because I didn't know about anything about sexual safety, and it had become pelvic inflammatory disease. And when I came out from anesthesia, the doctors told me this, and they said they didn't know if I would be able to have children. It was utterly devastating. And I spent a number of years after that just falling apart I couldn't learn the lessons I had to learn. I couldn't learn how to say no to men. I couldn't learn autonomy for my body. I was just so sure that God was punishing me, that I had no right to happiness, that I just fell from one semi-abusive relationship to the next. One of the other ways that I had to cope with all the trauma that had happened with the loss of my family, with the rape, with the news of my fertility maybe being compromised, and with all the bad relationships I was in, it was that I became a cutter. 
because every time I took a blade to my arm and made myself bleed, there was a sense of power that this was my body and I owned it and I could be in charge of it. And it was really only in those moments that I had that surety because everything else in life had taught me that it, it wasn't my body. And so I use that as a way of trying to stay sane. And very slowly over many years, way too many years, I rebuilt my life. And one of the really big things that helped me do that was um, going to college where I suddenly was sort of shocked to find out that I was intelligent. It had never dawned on me that I might be smart. You know, for some time I thought of myself as a victim and that was a really important step of empowerment, thinking these terrible things have happened and I have to speak up about them. And so I wrote a book about them and that was a really important act of claiming power. And now I continue to grapple with, well, what does it mean to be powerful and have had terrible things happen to you? How do you rebuild a strong identity without just seeing the world as divided between those who rape and those who are raped? Is there any other way to understand what's going on in our country that so many people from backgrounds very different than mine have experiences that are so similar to the one I had?